Greetings in our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace, grace be upon you in his precious and mighty name. We welcome you to God's Cup of Blessings Youth Ministries. The Ruach HaKodesh, also known as the Holy Spirit, is your host, and I am your co-host, Shepherdess Catherine Hunter Williams. Today we're going to continue from our last programs where we were teaching about the three different times Jesus Christ was tempted by the devil and how young people can be made free spiritually through the unmerited favor of Jesus Christ, which is also known as his grace. All taken from the scriptures, and you can read these later. Matthews 4, 1 through 11, 26, 36 to 44, and John 1, 17. Before we go any further, I always like to start off any of my ministry programs with a prayer. I believe in letting the devil know he's alive by stepping on his neck and head with prayer against him and all his forces of darkness that are assigned to me. So with that said, let us all pray in one spirit and be in agreement for our Lord Jesus Christ says where two or three are gathered together in his name, the prayer is already answered. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, my Jesus. All right. My Lord, smite the loins of those who rise up against me and strike my foes until they rise no more. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, El Elyon, and I abide in the shadow of my Almighty God, El Shaddai. Holy Spirit, you are my leader and my teacher. Move me out of the way and give me a fresh anointing to teach your youth what you want them to know on this day. Let all the young people who have an ear to hear, hear your word. My Lord Jesus, and I thank you, my Abba, for giving me another day and opportunity to fulfill your purpose in my life. In Shua HaMashiach's all-powerful and majestic name, and Shua HaMashiach is Jesus Christ, and Abba is our Father. As Jesus is, so am I in this world. Amen. All right. Excuse me. But it's a little warm up in here. Ah. All right, let's keep going forward. Before we get into our teaching for today, I want to speak to young people about what you choose to speak and how it will impact the kind of life you will live. Did you know there's a supernatural power in the words you speak? This is why I always say speak the scriptures I give you because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. In the book of Genesis 1, 3, 2, 4, our Father God spoke everything into existence. He spoke it and then he saw it. In other words, if you begin speaking positive things into your life, you will see it manifest or appear in your life. In 2 Corinthians 4 and 13, it says, I believe, therefore I speak. This is your faith, young people. You're believing, therefore you begin speaking it into existence. You have a new year coming up in your life. Begin to learn how to speak positive words into your life and into your family's lives. Look up the scriptures of our Father God's promises and begin speaking them over your life in faith and you will see a difference in your life in this new year to come. If it is healing you need, you will see total healing within your mind and your body. If it's finances you need, you will begin to see an increase in your financial provisions. If it's protection, love, or restored relationships, you will begin to see wonderful changes coming into your life. Excuse me. Jesus, Paul, I'm sweating tough up up here. <laughs> You're <Yeah>, right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There is no limit to the grace and goodness of our Father God through Jesus Christ. Go with me to Mark 11, 22, I mean 11, 22 to 20, 11, 22 through 24. Mark. Mark comes right after Matthew's in the four Gospels. Mark 11, 22 through 24. I still haven't took your, taken your advice, Paul, and, and, and put these full these scriptures up like I should before coming. But that's okay, too. Gives me some time to uh, 
speak to the people, to the young people, and, and tell them what's going on, what the real deal is. Go with me once again to Mark 11, 22 through 24. If you're there, speak. Okay, verse 22. And Jesus answering, answering saith unto them, have faith in God. And I'm speaking from the Holy Bible, King James Version. Supposed to be a giant print, but I still have a problem seeing it. All right, verse 23. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall will say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and will not doubt in their heart, but will believe that those things which you say will come to pass, you will have whatsoever you say. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Come on, one more time. Uh, verse 22, and Jesus answered, say, say unto them, have faith in God. That's the number one key, have faith in God. Number two, I mean 23, verse 23, for verily I say unto you that whosoever will say unto this mountain, mountains are your problems, any issues that you may have in your life. Be thou removed, move it, and don't, and, and be thou cast into the sea, move it, get it out of your life, and not doubt in your heart, but will believe that those things which you say will come to pass or manifest or appear. You will have whatsoever you say. Therefore, I say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. That's why I say, I believe, therefore I speak. That's my faith. That would be your faith also. <clears throat> This is your faith, young people, you're believing. Therefore, you begin speaking it into existence. That's what Mark 11, 22 through 24. In other words, that's what it's about. You believe it. You speak it. I believe it. Therefore, I speak it and continue doing it. And just because you don't see it happening does not mean that it's not happening. Does not mean that God is not working behind the scene. You know, because you can't see it, it will manifest. You just got to have the faith, hold on to it and keep on speaking it. Speak it, speak it, speak it. There is power. I think it's pro in Proverbs, there is life and, uh, life and death in the power of the tongue. It's also in, in the book of James. This here has a lot of power. Hallelujah. In other words, when you, you okay, I already said that you're speaking words of faith. I believe, therefore I speak, there is nothing you can't have, nothing you can't do, nothing you can't be, and nowhere you can't go. Begin to speak positive things into your life. Give our Father God permission to come into your life. Move the mountains out of your life or the problems out of your life by speaking them away from you. Uh, and I'm going to give you an example. I never say I'm broke. That would not come out of my mouth. No way. I always counteracted by Philippians 4 19. My God supplies all of my needs through his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Counteracted. Don't, don't let that word broke. Because if you say you broke, you will be broke. But if you say I'll never be broke, you won't ever be broke. You understand what I'm saying? I hope you understand exactly what I'm saying. You have to speak it and counteract. Because that's to me from the devil keeping you broke. He the lie. He the one who does that. And then when you be speaking it, you falling into his trap. Don't do that. Use God's words. Like I said, look up scriptures of his promises in the, in the Bible. They in there. You just got to find them and start speaking them, speaking them into your life. You can speak what you will and it must obey you. When you speak to whatever you believe, it will strengthen your faith and anchor your spirit on God's promises for your life. Look up those promises in his word. Not only can you speak faith into your situation, you can just speak it into your soul, also known as your mind. Soul is mine.
people think it's your spirit, but just this is it says no soul, spirit and body. It's three things. We have a mind, we have a spirit and we have a body. So that tells you that there is the soul is the mind. The spirit is within you and you got a body that encases the spirit. All right. Now, repeat this with me. I just had said to you, uh, not only can you speak faith into your situation, you can speak to your soul. Also, your mind and speak this. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am healed. I am made whole and I'm growing stronger each and every day in my faith. I have the favor of God in my life. He blesses me always. Something good is going to happen to me today. I'll never be broke another day in my life. All my bills are paid in full. My sins have been forgiven and I have been made right with my Father God through Jesus Christ. I speak life and not death over my life. I will begin to let the truth of God's word guide my way and I will discover that I have power through Jesus Christ by speaking his word. Amen. I tell you, young people, speaking the word of God will make the difference in your life. This is how you unlock God's supernatural power in your life by speaking his word over you and your family. But you must always remember to speak positive things at all times. Speaking negative things will bring negativity into your life. You open the door for Satan to come in. <clears throat> You must watch what you speak, young people, at all times. I just have to repeat that again. But speak freely and boldly. Speak forth by faith into your lives. Let our Father God do the work and let him win the victory for you. The secret is through the powerful, unfailing, finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross for you. The victory has already been won. People speaking the word of God will make a difference in your life. This is how you unlock God's supernatural power into your life by speaking his word, speaking his word. Jesus said it's written, speak his word into your life. Let our father God do the work and let him win the victory for you. The secret is through the powerful, unfailing, finished work of Jesus Christ up on the cross for you. The victory has already been won. I think I've already spoke these words. You simply receive it all by faith in Jesus through resting and relaxing in his grace. Salvation is the greatest miracle of all times that can happen in your life when you believe in your heart and open your mouth and speak. In other words, that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life. The Bible states clearly, I believe, therefore I speak. It will come to pass in your life. As I've stated before, our Father God spoke and then he saw every word he spoke come into existence. Whoa. He created the world that we live in today. Young people, I'm telling you, if you have not given your life to Jesus, give your life to him today. Amen. Now, one more thing before we move forward into our teaching for today. Let me speak to you about repenting and redemption and what they both truly mean. I want you to know, young people, that when I speak, I do not teach in the natural, but in the supernatural. And everything that I have gotten written here, this was given to me supernaturally. It wasn't something that I just come up with and I just did it and typed it up and whatever. It was given to me through the Holy Spirit, who is a spirit. The Bible says our God is a spirit and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. The gospel of Jesus Christ has been released in my life and grace is the gospel. I believe in God, therefore I speak. You heard me say it in prayer. Holy Spirit, move me out of the way to teach your young people today your word. As I have said many times before on our program, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, which is Jesus and means life to everyone that believes. Many of you understand the term repentance to mean turning from sin. I want you to know this is not the biblical definition of repentance. In the Bible, the word repent means to change one's mind, soul, mind. 
and Luke 3 and 8 and Acts 3, 19, both tells you that the true repentance, that true repentance will result in a change of actions. And then Acts 26, 20 B declares, then to the Gentiles, which is a non-Jewish person, they, they should repent and turn to God and do the works meet for repentance. In other words, begin doing the works of repentance. The full biblical definition of repentance is a change of mind that results in a change of action. One more time. The full biblical definition of repentance is a change of mind that results in a change of action. And that's a true statement because I never ever envisioned in my life that I would be doing this. No way. So I know that I have fully repented and I feel that the Lord is pleased with me because of the works that I'm doing for him. He, he, he and he will let you know when he's pleased with you he, in the through the blessings that he gives you in your life. I need a healing. I got healing, you know, so. As I said, the full definition, biblical definition of repentance is a change of mind that results in a change of action. And I know in my life there has been a change in my actions. <laughs> Am I right, Mr. Paul? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't know where I was going, but I was on a definitely a self-destructive path. And uh, from repenting and giving my life to Jesus, I have a change of action. Hallelujah. So young people change your mind and give your life to Jesus today. It's not something that's going to happen and you're going to change overnight. It's a process. It is a step by step. But if you let the Lord guide you into each step that he takes you on and you listen to him and do it, you will see the change in your life. As I always said, tomorrow might be too late. So give your life to him today. Let him come to your house right now. And when he comes, be ready to move for your life will definitely change. And you will know when the Lord comes up in there and he tells you move, you got to move. I don't know if ands about it. You could think you can't have to move or whatever, but he'll make the circumstances change in your life where you have to move. So if he comes, you got to move. He is your omnipresent God, Jehovah Shuma, who will never fail nor forsake you. Forsake means to abandon you, like a, a man will abandon you, a woman will abandon you, uh, uh, abandon you, your children will abandon your mother, your father, you know, they abandon you. He would never do that. He is always right there with you. He will manifest himself in you on your level. It doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, he will come to your level. In other words, to him, in other words, come to him just as you are. He does not judge you as people will. He will accept you and meet you right where you are. He even will speak your language. Sometimes I be talking to these young people and I don't be understanding nothing they say because they be speaking in broken English, you know, like they do when they texting and they don't do the full word. I, I, I have to sometimes send them a text back. What do that mean? You know, like uh, DKN, which I think it means no, I D K. I don't know. Well, I didn't know what that meant, you know, but that's the way they talk. And, and, and I can't understand it, but Jesus can understand them. He comes right there where he, where they are. Everything you need is in him. He is God. And besides him, there is no other. There is no other. As I said, he does not look at you as people do. He looks at you with love and compassion. Wow. And whenever you feel, you will feel his love for you. It's just a, it's a warm feeling that comes over you. He looks at your heart. He loves you, as I've said, and will meet you right where you are. And you know what? If you don't believe right, you cannot live right. Once you give your life to Jesus, you will be in, the, in right standing with our Father God. It is a gift of righteousness given to you through Jesus Christ. It's free. You cannot earn it. It's given to you freely, but only after you seek his kingdom and all these things will be given to you. One minute to your four minute to you. Okay, go with me to Matthew 6, 33 
uh, through 34. Matthew 6, 33, 34. Speak. But seek you, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care, take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil there. Deal with today. Nothing else. Just deal with today. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow, you don't know. Leave it alone. The Lord says, don't worry. He takes care of it all. And I would like you to read the whole um, from Matthew and 6, thir six uh, through uh, 25 through 34. Therefore, I'm a, verse 25, I'm going to read to you right quick. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor yet for your body, what you will put on is not the life more than the meat and the body than the raiment. Don't worry about anything. Don't have to worry about nothing to eat, none of this stuff. The Lord will provide. If you don't want to be worried about anything anymore, give your life to Jesus. Whatever you do in the natural through faith will begin doing the opposite. Even in the midst of your sinning, God will see you as, a right, as righteous because you became righteous when you gave your life to Jesus Christ. All right, I got to stop right here. But if you really, you know, do that, and like it says, seek, but seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Healing, provision, um, better relationships, love in your life, happiness, joy within your spirit, you know, your soul. And nobody can't take that away from you. But you got to give your life to Jesus. So, if there's anyone who wants to give their life to Jesus today and is ready to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, speak this prayer with me and begin a whole new and incredible life with Christ Jesus. You can come to him, young people, just as you are, and he will do the rest. Let him in your life to love you. And that love, when you feel his love, is such a warm feeling that comes over you. You would know you're loved by him. Today, move forward into your new year with a new life in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Be free, young people, through his grace today. Now speak this prayer with me coming from the scripture, Romans 10, 9 through 10. Ready? Speak. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm speaking with my mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ died for my sins and I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins and I'm asking you to forgive me. And I thank you, Jesus, that I am now saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and the fire of God. I believe and accept you, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior of my life. As Jesus is, so am I in this world and Jesus Christ's powerful name, amen. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. See how simple it is, young people? Just confessing it with your mouth. As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are now a child of God. I encourage you to get into a Holy Spirited, full gospel, Jesus Christ, and grace teaching church. And to start renewing your mind by studying the word of God on a daily basis to develop a relationship with him and the Holy Spirit. One minute. Now young people begin to experience the wonderful divine blessing of love, peace, provision, protection, and joy that will be coming into your life like never before. Until next time, let go and stay free in Jesus' grace. And remember when you put your faith in our Lord Jesus, your sins were removed, your hope is restored, and your future is bright. Let his divine love, blessing, and glorious countenance shine upon you. And your family always rest and relax in the finished works of Jesus Christ and let a shalom peace be within you and have a Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa and a God blessed and prosperous new year. God bless you with all the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, 2 to 13. Amen.